like project, uh, this feature. Um, so uh, we have this data source uh, proposal, but the first version for data source is only uh, work on snapshots. So we have um, a data source kind and data source name. And uh, also based on the uh, feedback, we also add uh, API group. So I think kind, name, and API group will be used to uniquely identify a referenced API object. Um, so whenever you specify a data source, you have to put for snapshot and also snapshot API group, which is snapshot.storage.kis.io and the name of your snapshot. And this proposal is uh, approved and merged. Uh, and we also have the API code uh, for adding this data source in the PVC spec. Uh, the change already reviewed uh, by Tim and uh, the, we already adjust, uh, adjust the comments. So hopefully it can be merged soon too. And uh, second, um, a uh, snapshot proposal also updated based on the changes and reviewed uh, addressed comments. And um, uh, the snapshot API already merged. Uh, the controller code is uh, reviewed and uh, hopefully this week uh, can be further reviewed. And uh, we also added unit test. Um, after the controller code can be merged, uh, we will try to add automation controller uh, also in the external snapshot uh, repo to handle the ver verification for snapshot API. So we can, uh, whenever there is error, we can fail to create API object directly uh, early. Uh, any questions so far for the status update? Uh, good. Uh, oh, I want to mention last time we discussed the size field um, in both volume snapshot and volume snapshot content. And uh, I think we, we kind of agree and uh, we uh, decided to use the name called restore size. Uh, we don't want to put snapshot there because since it is already in snapshot API object, it's no need to mention snapshot there. And uh, the, the, the meaning here is uh, we will try to get this value from the CSI driver. And um, when you provision new volume from snapshot, a restore snapshot, this number can be used to check that uh, the, the new volume should be at least this size. And uh, we can use uh, a machine controller to like verified whether this size it is, is satisfied. And uh, will depend on the CSI driver to give us uh, this size. And the driver can uh, decide, okay, uh, which value is, uh, is right, right, for restore uh, the snapshot. Uh, any questions for this name or this field size? So just to clarify, we're going with restore size as the name? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. So we didn't use the, the D there because restore is a, like a future action. Um, so yeah, it's just the name. And we will uh, put comments to explain right, the meaning of this size. So the users that are using this, they, they can like understand uh, the meaning of that better. Okay, um, so last time uh, I mentioned uh, we, are, we plan to use a readiness condition um, for data source um, proposal. Uh, sorry, we haven't, uh, I haven't got enough time to uh, finish, so I didn't share earlier, uh, but um, I managed to write uh, something in a separate doc so we can kind of review it 
um, explain a little bit about the meaning, uh, the concept of this readiness. Uh, so we already have a called a part readiness uh, like feature. And um, for this concept, first the um, API has um, readiness gate uh, struct. And uh, in the gate struct, uh, basically it has a condition type. So it's a generic type, like you can specify any condition you want to put there. So you're probably already familiar with conditions. So in uh, API object, normally we have a list of conditions. Um, depends on what your object is and uh, you can specify different kinds of conditions. And here uh, it is give you uh, the kind of a, a string to specify what condition you want to put in your readiness gate. And uh, currently part spec, I change to like general object spec. So they have the same meaning. So in, the, in any object, right, you could put a readiness gate. It's a list of the readiness gate struct. And um, <clears throat> if you specify, right, any readiness gate, um, you can uh, basically tell a controller or something, your object must satisfy like all these readiness gates to uh, give you the final state that your object is ready. So all the conditions you put in this gate must be satisfied before you can say that, um, your final, like this object is ready. And uh, in your object status, that uh, again, you can specify a list of conditions there. So uh, maybe we can use the example to kind of uh, clarify all these concepts. So in your object, uh, user or let's say admission controller can put a list of readiness gates in the spec. Here, if you have like uh, some different features, right? You all want to set uh, the gate there, and uh, you you have feature one, feature two as the gate. And uh, in your object conditions, uh, you also have these uh, feature one condition, feature two condition. And after your object is created, right, uh, somewhere it can monitor your condition and update the condition, whether the condition is true or false. So right now here, this feature one condition is false and the feature two condition is true. So your final uh, condition for this object should be false. Only after both condition become true, uh, your final condition uh, can set to be true. Uh, any questions so far for this uh, readiness gate and the conditions? Can those, with this proposal, can we declare other um, options for the readiness gate? For instance, with the populator, we'd want to have, um, you know, the populator has populated the volume. So beyond, I, I can't see below your cursor on the two options here, but it, would this provide us a means of defining a condition by which the PV, PVC is bound, but it's not ready to be uh, used? Um, yes, so it's, uh, we, we kind of need to discuss, discuss this point. So for currently PVPVC, the final condition we use bound, it's a, a face, right? Right. So if we don't want to change this, then uh, the controller can check the gates, the randomness gate, if uh, right now for data populate, population, right, we can have one gate saying, okay, whether data is populated or not. And the condition, the controller will check this gate and see whether the condition satisfied and then can mark uh, the bond as the final phase. So uh, the final condition we use 
not condition actually we use uh, bound phase, but uh, the controller can use this gate to determine whether when it should set the, the final bound phase or not. So it's just kind of checking, um, is this condition like you put in the Redis gate satisfied or not? If it is not satisfied, it cannot bound, put a bound uh, status, a space. If we start uh, like a new object, let's say, we can also use condition um, as a final state. We can say, oh, final condition, uh, something, something um, true or false. But uh, since historically we already use phase for PVPVC, probably we kind of want to continue to use bound as the kind of final condition. But uh, the redness gate we put there uh, will be, let's say, a new condition uh, called, let's say, data populated. And you put the redness gate data populated condition as one of the gate. And depends on uh, if we have a new feature, we can put new gates. So whatever like the name is it, whatever condition is, you put uh, in your gate. And you also add as one of your uh, object condition. Now, uh, is, is it clear? Kind of, I mean, if, if still the final condition or phase is bound and we need it to be bound in order for that to happen, I'm not sure we get around that then. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can discuss that. Yeah, it, it, it might not easy to change, but yeah, we, we will see. So okay. it's uh, your early proposal right now. So uh, I'll just go ahead. Um, for volume, right? If we want to put redness gate for volume, since volume is kind of special, we have two objects um, instead of one. So we really have different options. So uh, first, um, I'll, uh, we can use PVC to put the redness gate. But the condition, uh, I think, should be uh, in PV, the volume. So you define a list of conditions in your PV. Uh, right now, we already. Uh, have actually conditions in PVC used by, I think, resize um, volume, a resize file system. We could also put a list of conditions in PV or just use PVC uh, the conditions. Uh, we can see what's the difference. Uh, if we want to use PVC uh, as to put the readiness gate, so in your PVC spec, uh, you need to have redness gate in the spec. And uh, since we add this data source and um, a dimension controller can check, okay, if your spec has data source specified and uh, it can automatically add, let's say, a redness gate uh, in the PVC spec and saying data populated from data source is the condition that you need to satisfy, okay? And um, then external provisioner, let's only talk about dynamic provisioning first. And external provisioner um, first provision a volume and um, it could be an empty volume, uh, depends on your data source. Uh, for snapshot, actually, it's e kind of easier because as long as it recognizes data source, it provision create volume from the snapshot and data is already populated. Uh, but in case of um, other data source, let's say uh, doc image, uh, uh, GitHub repo, so provisioner can only provision a new uh, empty volume. So, yes. Just a quick question. Um, 
you, you used the um, the PV example, uh, for example, creating a volume from a snapshot. I thought the create volume from snapshot resulted in a PVC though. Is that not true? Uh, create uh, volume from a snapshot. Uh, what do you mean result in PVC? The, the end result when you do a, a create volume from snapshot is the creation of a PVC or is it the creation of just a PV? Oh, so user uh, specify PVC, right? And the yeah. user will put data source in the PVC spec and uh, the data source kind would be snapshot and the name is your snapshot API object name. Right. And uh, when user create this, right, API server will yeah, immediately create a PVC objects um, right. first. And then uh, external provisioner will create the volume and also the PV object. Right. So uh, the the thing that I was wondering is um, in that in that case that doesn't it make more logical sense to be focused on on having the readiness check on the PVC as opposed to the PV. Uh, so here, the first option I put here is the readiness gate uh, set in PVC. Yep. Uh, by, let's say, the mission controller. So user can also specify readiness gate, but uh, for just for convenience, right, we can have a mission controller to do that step automatically. So when a mission controller uh, watch PVC and see there is data source, specified in the PVC spec, and then they can automatically put um, data populated uh, readiness gate in the PVC spec. So the gate is just tell, tell you that uh, in order to like um, make this object ready, you must satisfy, okay, data populated condition. Uh, is that clear? Uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, I think maybe I'll just have to wait and see. It, it okay. sounds like you've thought about what I was getting at, so that's good. Okay. Good. Yeah, so the readiness, uh, uh, here I put readiness, uh, actually it's readiness gate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is readiness gate. And you put your condition, um, let's say, I just name it data populated condition. That will be a new condition uh, we put in volume. So, okay, it tells, okay, data populated um, condition must become true. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can then say the PVC is ready to be used. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so I, I think that makes, to me, that makes total sense. I get that. I was, I was kind of trying to get my head wrapped around the, the uh, PV example that you have and having data populated true being reported on the PV um, because an external provisioner, well, not necessarily, yeah, an external provisioner or an external populator most likely is going to, I would assume, um, utilize a PVC. It would have to do a claim in order to populate that volume, right? Right, right, right. So it seems kind of, it seems kind of redundant, but uh, there, there yeah. may be cases I'm not thinking of, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so because these two objects model, so it gives us kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> different choices. <laughs> uh, it's bad or uh, good uh, in both. So, uh, the, again, the external provisioner first create empty volume. So, the readiness gate, the check is false, right? It's by default, it um, should be false. Its data is not popular yet. And then the external, we will have a external populator running somewhere as a part and also watch uh, those volume objects. And uh, when it see this uh, uh, PVC, right, uh, have this data source and the readiness, uh, the, the data public condition is not true, it's false. And uh, uh, then it can, 
uh, start to populate data. Um, if it uh, can, uh, I mean, can do that step. And uh, then uh, actually here yeah, you remind me, so here the status, we can just use PVC status actually. It's also okay. Um, let's say data populated is a condition in PVC status. And uh, after data is populated, it can put true to PVC um, condition. And uh, then we have a controller, uh, the PV controller, right, to just checking the readiness gate and the conditions specified in PVC. Uh, only if all the readiness gate uh, are satisfied, uh, it can mark uh, the final like um, ready states. Currently, again, we use bound as the final ready state. Uh, then we can uh, still use that or depends uh, whether we need a different thing to, to um, kind of indicate the PVC is ready to be used. Uh, so for this first option, I think we can put the running gate and also the conditions in PVC. So the gate would be in spec and condition in PVC status. And the, the gate can be set by admission controller and the status will be updated by external populator only when um, the populator kind of finish the uh, populated data and uh, we can set condition to be true. Uh, so any questions? No, just an observation. Uh, John and I've kind of been talking about this past couple of days and last week, mm -hmm. how we kind of keep toggling back and forth between the PVC and the PV. I mean, I get like here in your example where you have the external provisioner and that's really PV status, but I feel like we need to kind of come to terms of which object we're putting it on. Um, yes. Because yes. it feels unnatural. Like, I changed my proposal to be on the PV because it's actually the volume, but then with snapshots, it's the PVC in the data source. So I, I just feel like it's a good chance for us to maybe mm. yeah. decide where we really should be putting that. Um, right. Because the volume itself is the PV, but so. Yes, yes. but if a user like uh, yeah. died is PVC, Right. So, yeah, we, we can talk about the second option, basically put everything into PV. So uh, in PVC spec, we have data source. Uh, that I think we agree we have to put in PVC, right? So users specify where the data come from. And uh, then um, external provisioner like create volume but it cannot uh, populate the data, right? So it, when it create PV object, it could um, just uh, also add a readiness gate there. Although it cannot populate data, but it can put a gate. And uh, when external populator um, uh, watch the object and uh, see uh, it required to populate data, and uh, it can uh, finish this step and then uh, change update the condition and saying the data already populated. And uh, PV controller, uh, again, when it's trying to uh, final bind PVC PV, right? And also mark bound phase, it can check the readiness gate in PV object. So it should have no problem for PV controller to do, to check either PV or PVC objects. Okay. Um, yeah. 
I just said, okay, I don't know if someone else was trying to unmute on their phone. It sounded like the. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, one, uh, just uh, one kind of difference here is um, depending on we put the running skate condition in PVC or PV, right? uh, we allow external populator to have the uh, authority, right? The right to uh, write or to update the PV object, or if you put everything in PVC, then it need have the uh, authority to update PVC objects. Currently, I think Sad mentioned the um, uh, external provisioner cannot actually update PV uh, status. Uh, it can only create um, PV um, spec, I think, but it's not allowed to update the PV uh, status. We should uh, double check that. I think that's the case, but we should double check. Okay. So basically, depending what we want, we put there, right? Either PVC or PV, the, then we need to give this external populator um, a way to update like, those objects. And uh, whether there is a security concern, um, I'm not uh, sure. So seems like it's okay, seems it is actually property data, right? Mm, I, I don't see why we don't wa want to allow it to update the PV object. But for PVC, mm, I don't know anyone have concerns. Um, so anyone have like, um, some opinion about PVC or PV, like where we should put uh, the readiness the gate and conditions. So again, currently our PV um, does not have conditions yet. PVC has a list of condition already. That is for the resize uh, feature. And uh, uh, because the reason we want to put readiness gate is it's good for like extension. So I, so for in the future for storage and right, for volume, we have other kind of features and uh, we can just very easy to put a new condition, a new readiness gate for that feature. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense um, because that's user driven rather than the volume which isn't so given mm -hmm. we're driving everything from the pvc i guess it makes sense to have the readiness probe there so then does this data populated true flag make sense to be in the pv status then or would that just be assumed based on the readiness gate that's put in the pvc spec so the readiness gate I think it's more kind of, yeah, for user side, right? Uh, so here, although uh, it's kind of internally, we can directly help you to put running gate. Uh, the user just need to specify the data source. But for other features, a user might need to specify running gate for themselves. So for different user, they can also customize, I don't know, their running gate for their needs. If we put in PV, then there's no uh, like uh, options, right? For user to specify their readiness gate. Yeah, I agree. I think that makes sense. But uh, we also have to keep in mind readiness gate, uh, the condition type, must match the condition you already defined. So really you have to define a condition first in your object, and then you can put your readiness gate. Mm. 
so I just want to mention another uh, problem I, I've been uh, thinking just a little bit because currently we only focus on dynamic provisioning, right? But how about static um, binding? So uh, for PV objects, right? We can have predefined PV objects. And currently, uh, you just specify your volume, like some information, uh, like a storage class, etc. And uh, I think controller will try to find a matching PVC PV, right? Uh, when we introduce data source, and uh, but we we are right now does not put data source uh, into the PV uh, spec. So for static uh, binding, right, the controller might just uh, match PVC and PV without considering data source. So then it ends up, let's say, you happen to have a PV that satisfies all the other conditions except data source. Then how we identify this situation, or we allow it to happen and then the next step is wait for external populator to populate data to this volume. Or we want to only bind PVC to PV statically if the PV already pre-populated data. Um, How do you pre-populate the data though if it's not bound to something? I mean, I think that's our conundrum, right? So. So I don't know, it just, user can manually do that step first, and then uh, maybe it does not make much sense, but uh, uh, admin can, no, I mean admin. Admin can create a volume, right? And then prepare data. It's also possible. Or like I said, we could uh, again allow uh, PVPVC to bind without considering the data source part. And then external populator will uh, do the next step. It's also, I think, okay. So if we put strategic gate in PVC, so when PVC is created, and admin uh, automation controller can um, automatically put strategic gate there. So the rest would be kind of be sim similar between uh, dynamic provisioning or uh, static, right? So it finds a matching one. So it won't mark the final state as bound, but it can kind of pointer to each other. So I think it, the PV controller will try to um, specify the claim reference, right, the, and the volume name in the spec, PVC spec, PV spec. Basically that means you point to each other and then the external populator uh, will basically do the same thing. When you see uh, the situation, the PVC has a redness gate data source, and uh, but the condition is not true yet, it can populate data and um, change the condition to true. So in this, uh, in this aspect, I think it would be better to put redness gate in PVC spec, otherwise, uh, controller won't recognize this situation and just bind statically PVC PV. Uh, I think that makes the most sense. I'm, I agree with you, Jing, on that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, because for static binding, uh, the PV is pre-created, uh, and uh, we the uh, mean might not put any redness gate there. Right. If like we put redness gate in the PV object, mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, any questions about this uh, readiness? Does it like 
So probably we just kind of introduced this new concept and uh, people need a little bit more time to think through um, the same here. So uh, I think next week I will try to spend some time to like uh, put more details in the proposal and uh, have more use cases um, so we can uh, discuss like in more detail next time. Uh, is, does it sound okay? Yes. Oh, okay. I'll think of, uh, John, I've been talking just how the, the populator would work. Um, Mm, right, right. Use a readiness pro after it's bound based on maybe a container or something. I don't know. I'll have to look through it in a little more detail. Right. But um, uh, to actually, for snapshot a clone, right, these two features does not require a external populator. So the external provisioner will create volume and uh, kind of, we can say, public data in just one step. Uh, in this situation, uh, we are saying uh, we don't really need readiness feature be ready to like kind of ship snapshot feature. So uh, it's just um, we need um, a new external provisioner to make sure our user when use snapshot feature, they must have updated external provisioner so that um, it can recognize data source and then uh, create volume from the snapshot. So when they create volume, uh, it makes sure to have data like already in the volume. Um, so we decide like this feature can be the next step, right? So the, let's say the snapshot or uh, clone can um, first uh, alpha version, and then we work on more like uh, the readiness design. Uh, doesn't anyone have uh, problems with that or questions? So this is mainly for really uh, external populator to, to work better to prevent user to snack, uh, to start using PVC, but when data not yet populated or in the middle of populating the data. Uh, any questions? <laughs> And there is a, a little bit um, detail about, uh, I think someone mentioned that when external populator, normally we will run as like a pod too. And um, so it's when it's trying to populate data, it required to attach mount volume, even though volume is not completely ready, right? We say uh, bound or we can use bound as that to indicate. Because currently, if you check attach um, detach controller or mount uh, volume manager, they all check bound uh, before they're trying to attach mount volumes. So when they get PVC, it will check, okay, it's PVC bound, and then they get the PV object, and then trying to attach the volume. So we might need to some, uh, we, we will need to modify the attach controller to handle external populator case. So even though it's not uh, ready yet, but for this special part, we can, let's say, uh, current thought is use annotation or something to mark this part is special and attach uh, or mount will, a controller will allow to attach mount volume, uh, even though the PVC is not ready. That means the data is not populated yet. So we have a li some thoughts about that. So if you have questions, so we, we can further discuss.
Uh, okay, so seems uh, not many questions so far. Um, so go back to our snapshot. Uh, so I already have this update. Um, hopefully this week we can merge most of our code, uh, including the con controller part and the data source uh, code change. Uh, it will like, we'll be highly appreciated if you have time to like, help us review the code and test the code. Um, any questions? Um, anything like I miss or you want to discuss further? Um, <laughs> still quiet. So, thank you. Uh, yes, so the, the yeah. proposal was just merged. Oh, team oh, great. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So I think uh, I think so far we we I think uh, with old help like we make good progress and um, uh, alpha version is like on the way so um, hope everyone like can help us to test it and uh, we are also trying to add more tests currently we have some unit tests and uh, yeah we we'll appreciate your help. If you also have some time to volunteer on uh, adding more tests, uh, that would be great. Uh, anything else uh, we want to discuss for this meeting? Uh, great. Uh, so uh, I think we'll just uh, have a bit another week to to talk more about Agnes and see whether we can uh, have alpha version like for you. Yeah, ready. Uh, okay, so we still have 15 minutes uh, unless anyone want to talk about something. So we can just finish meeting and see you next week. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank, you. thank you, bye.